perhaps your Morning. worst ever. <laughs> My 25 years. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Much better. I'm glad that you're with us this morning. Uh, we are uh, blessed to have you with us. A reminder, uh, if you'll turn your cell phone off uh, during this service time. That would be great. Welcome to those of you who are joining us uh, online. Uh, Facebook Live, uh, falmouth.online.church. Uh, uh, and uh, we're so glad that you're with us. Uh, welcome uh, to the, the guys from uh, Boston Baptist there, uh, representing in the pews. Uh, good, good start to the year, guys. Looking forward to uh, having our time together where we worship the Lord, hear from Him uh, in His Word, uh, spend time together uh, growing uh, in grace. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we've gathered here to worship you, give you thanks. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the, your Holy Spirit who indwells every believer. We thank you for your word, which is certain and sure. We pray, Father God, that our focus would be to have our hearts open to you, to your work in our lives, to mold us, to shape us, to make us more like your son, Jesus. Forgive us our sins, for they are many. Draw us close to you. You are a great God. We can so easily be distracted or discouraged. It's good for us to declare you are a great God. Now, Father, we give you ourselves in this time, and we ask that you would be glorified in and through us. We pray this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Will you please rise?
thank you that you are sovereign. You are all powerful, all knowing, all wise, and all loving. We pray, Father, that we would recognize your greatness and our distractions and discouragements would diminish because we see you for who you are, a great God. Father, would you help us to worship you, not merely in song, but in the way that we live our lives, to continually present our bodies as living sacrifices. We want to give ourselves to you. We want to declare your greatness, live for your glory, and be a blessing to those around us. Thank you, Father, for including us in your rescue plan of salvation, for giving us a forever relationship with you through faith in Jesus. Come, Father, and transform us. Make us more like your Son. We pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Would you just wave at the people around you? Usually we greet each other warmly. You can wave, you know, if, if, uh, you, know, if you want to do a toe tap, you can do that, holding on to the, uh, the top, the, the pew there. Welcome. Glad that you're here. Uh, my name is John Ely. I'm the pastor here at Falmouth Baptist Church, welcoming some of you here for the very first time, welcoming some of you back for the very first time. We're very glad to do that with you. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't put your cell phone in the off position, put that in the off position. A reminder that uh, we are not passing uh, the offering plate. Uh, you can go online and give online, or there is a uh, box in the foyer, and you can uh, give online there. Are there any other announcements of the church that need to be made? Pastor Tim will be coming up and sharing in uh, the message time uh, this morning and next week, Lord willing. I'll be sharing uh, with you on how to be a Christian citizen. So uh, get your stuff to throw at me ready so you can uh, disagree. Uh, nor during normal times, I don't even remember what normal times are. <laughs> During normal times, during the 10 o'clock hour, you can ask questions from anywhere in life to the Bible. It's you know time for me to answer those questions. Uh, you can just meet me in the parking lot after next week's sermon and accost me with your questions or your disagreements. But we'll be looking and see what uh, God's Word says uh, to us about being Christian citizens. I'm going to invite uh, Deacon Sam up to uh, pray for us, and then we're going to sing together, How Great Is Our God. If you have uh, those prayer requests, remember, amen, fbc at gmail.com, amen, fbc at gmail.com. We would love to be praying for you. You can also join our prayer list, uh, our prayer loop on our prayer list, uh, the same thing. Come on up, Deacon Sam, I'll, I'll slide on over. And uh, we'd love for you to be on that, uh, that prayer list with us uh, so that we can pray even as we're apart. Join our hearts in prayer. Father, it's indeed our privilege to be in this place to worship together. We ask, Father, that our hearts would be in a good place to hear from you today. We need so much to hear your voice in this turbulent time. We ask, Father, that your love would be seen in us. We are the church. Help us, Father, to be the body of Christ, the bride of Christ that will one day be perfect and beautiful. Help us to reach out in love to those around us. We pray for the message that comes forth today, that your Holy Spirit would move our hearts to be more like Christ. It's only in him that our hope exists. He is eternal forever. And what he brings to our life is life itself. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for each one in the body of Christ. We pray, Father, that many might join us in this time, become saved, and be in heaven with us when you take the church home to be with you. We thank you. Your love is what keeps us going each day. And we thank you, Father, that each day is a blessing from you. Help us 
to reach out to those around us with your love, to care for one another, to love each other, and to be like our Savior. Father, we love you and help us to worship you in truth and spirit today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
pastor asked if there were other announcements, I forgot. There are the sermon notes uh, and uh, individually packaged crayons there. Uh, could you get these to Madeline? Madeline, just, there's a place in here to draw the, a picture of the preacher. And uh, she did really, really good. If you could pass those on, it'd be great. Thanks. Uh, Let's pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you do, Lord. We thank you for bringing us here this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are our Savior, and that by coming to you, we might have eternal life by just trusting in you as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray for those that are unable to be with us here today because of whatever reason. We think of Shirley, dear Lord. We pray that you would especially be with her. Um, guide Help her, dear Lord. Keep her comfortable. And we just ask that your will would be done with her. And Lord, we pray for those that are traveling, that can't be here for other reasons. We ask that you would be with them. And now, Lord, we ask that you be with Tim as he brings the message this morning. We ask that you would just lay your hand on him. We thank you for him and his family. Thank you for Pastor John and his and their family. We just ask that you would be with them. Thank you again, Lord. Good morning. It is uh, my pleasure to be joining you today. Um, the uh, uh, this is uh, this is week four of the sermon series that we've been in uh, for a while now called Follow Jesus, uh, and uh, and we're going to actually wrap this up today. Uh, so four weeks is is a, is a good long time for a series. Uh, we'll wrap this up today, and as well as wrapping up. Uh, follow Jesus. We want to present to you a doctrine that uh, I think the evangelical churches and many churches struggle with over the years, and, and so we'll do that as well. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but before we get into the, the scriptures, uh, I want to remind you there's, there's uh, four groups of people that, uh, that are uh, in the world today. There are people who don't have a relationship with God, <clears throat> and they don't want to have a relationship with God. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, they, they, they're not interested. I know that there are people in Cape Cod uh, like this. I know there are people in Massachusetts like this all over America and, and truly around the world, uh, secular people who have no, no desire to have a relationship with God. And there's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, some people, they're just not interested. Some people are hostile uh, towards God and, and religion. Uh, and some people are just, uh, you know, indifferent to the whole thing and, and not interested in, in pursuing a relationship with God and not interested in knowing uh, if there even is a God. Uh, and so there's, there's these, these people all over the place. It reminds me of, of the Dixons, our missionaries to, uh, to, to France. They, they, they're sent to and they live in a beautiful country and they live in a beautiful city. But God is, is not even on the minds of many people who live there. It's not even on, on their radar screen. Uh, for the Dixons, it's been a hard, hard work and a lifelong ministry. Uh, they've been there for years and years, decades and decades, and even retired and staying there and continuing ministry in that area. An area where largely God is not even on the radar screen of the people that they're trying to present the gospel uh, to. Um, and so for whatever reason, these people have decided I'm not interested in God. And I'm satisfied with my life the way that it is. And then there's another group of people. There's a group of people that don't have a relationship with God, but they want to. Right? And so these people have come to know that there's something missing in life. Uh, that uh, uh, there's, there's a hole that they haven't been able to fill. And, and many of them have tried to fill this hole through relationships with other people. They've tried to fill this hole uh, through work and, uh, and success, and they've tried to fill this hole with, with money or with uh, you know, drugs or alcohol or addiction or whatnot, and they just can't seem to fill this hole. And so many of them have come to a crisis point in life that they're looking for some kind of higher power, that there's something out there. Uh, these people, their hearts are ripe, right? Uh, these are people, their hearts are open to God. And to seeking God and to wondering, is there, is there a God and does he care about me? All right. um, and then there are people that have a relationship with God. And they're sure that they have a relationship with God. Uh, now, I want to I caution you. In this group of people, there are people who have a relationship with God. And they're sure that they have a relationship with God. 
but they really don't. Right? They really don't. Uh, they, they believe with, with all their heart that they do, uh, but, they, but they really, really don't. Um, uh, I want to be careful in addressing this and respectful towards those, but the fact is, if Christianity is true, right? if Jesus is who he says that he was, if he did what the Bible said that he did, then only with a relationship with Jesus can you have a relationship with God. And so there are people all around the world that believe that they have a relationship with God, and they're sure that they do, but they really don't. Uh, those aren't the people that I'm talking about in this group three. All right, so I'm specifically talking group three, uh, the other folks, those who are Christ followers, who we would say they're Christians, they believed upon Jesus Christ, they have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and they're sure that they do. And then there's this, this fourth group of people, right? People who have a relationship with God, and they're sure that they do, but they think that they can lose that relationship somehow. Uh, they, this group of people and then the, the other group of people, those that, uh, that don't have a relationship with God but want to, those are the two groups of people that I really hope are tuning in today in some way, either here or from far, far away. Uh, those are the two groups of people. I really hope that you, you hear what we have to say this morning. But before I get into that, let me simply, this disclaimer, right? It is, I, I'm not trying to cause anyone to doubt what you have. Right? That's not my purpose, is to cause you to doubt what you have. All right? But on the other hand, I don't want you to think that you have something that you don't have. And so many people think that they have something and they really don't have that. And so again, it's not my purpose to cause you to doubt that you have what you have. Uh, but I would really hate for you to think and to live life thinking that you have something that, that you do not have. Uh, and so that's where we're going. I think both of those things are equally dangerous. And so uh, here's where we're headed today. Um, uh, I, I know that it's, it's, it's one thing to know that you have a relationship with God. It's quite a different thing to know that you have a relationship with God and to be absolutely sure that. And then I think it's, it's even quite a, a different thing. To know that you have a relationship with God, to be sure that you have a relationship with God, and to know that that relationship is a forever and always relationship, and that you are secure in that relationship, and you don't have to worry about somehow losing that relationship. And so uh, the, the real question that we'll tackle along with, you know, as we finish up Follow Jesus is, is a real relationship with God, is that permanent, or is it somehow conditional? All right, is there is there fine print in the contract? All right, so those are what we want to talk about today. One person puts it this way. Once a person has been born again into the family of God, received new life, a new nature, been justified and sealed by the Holy Spirit, can that individual ever become unsaved by sinning or ceasing to believe or by any other cause? All right, now truthfully, uh, uh, there are people out there, I know people, I'm very close to people, right? I, I, I listen to them, I respect them, I have relationships with them, who would read that statement and their answer would be, well, yes. Right? Uh, and, and so, not speaking down to somebody who, who, who would read that statement and say, well, yes, that, that's true. I just want to look into the Word of God today and see what Jesus has to say about this topic. And we'll agree that, that he's right, regardless of where you or I stand Jesus is right. And so there are people that we respect and that we know and that we love and that we probably attend our church and all of that. And so as we look into this, uh, just to know that we're, we're putting Jesus' word uh, as the authority in our lives about this particular topic. All right, and so let's assume today that, that uh, everyone here and, and everyone listening at home and tuning in from far, far away, that you're a follower of Jesus. Can you lose that relationship somehow? Can you lose that salvation? Is there something that you could do that would, uh, that would uh, interrupt this, this relationship, remove this relationship from, from you and God? So as we look into our, our passage today, Jesus is going to do us two big favors. It's important that you hear this because nearly every Christian struggles with this question at some point. And so as we look into our text, Jesus is going to do us two big favors. First of all, he's going to, he's going to tell us, he's going to identify who really does uh, has, have a relationship with God. He's going to identify them. And then secondly, he's going, to, he's going to verify how permanent that relationship is. So first, he'll identify uh, 
you know, how we really do have a relationship with God. And then secondly, he's going to verify how permanent is that. All right, those are the two things that he does for us today. So if, you, if you'd like to know, do I have a relationship with God? You've been wondering, you've been thinking, right? Uh, here's, here's where we're, we're going today. Um, I think he, in our passage today, there are three questions that, that Jesus brings up that we can answer to know, do I really have a relationship with God? Is my relationship secure? Right? And so the first of those three questions is, am I sensitive to the word of Jesus? Am I sensitive to the word of Jesus? All right, if you really want to know whether or not you're a Christian, whether or not you have what you think you have, all right, am I sensitive to the word of Jesus? So we're going to look at the – first, let's talk about the context of our text. All right, John is writing. We're going to be in the book of John today, chapter 10. All right, John is writing uh, to, to us today, and he's writing about uh, who, who – in our text, who is he talking to? Uh, he's talking to Pharisees. They were the – uh, religious PhDs of the day. He's talking to Sadducees, the religious attorneys of the day. He's talking to skeptics. He's talking to unbelievers. He's talking to people who rejected what he had to say, who, didn't, who rejected what he had to say about himself, what he had to say about God, what he had to say about God's kingdom. All right, those are the folks that, that Jesus is talking to. And they're badgering him, asking him, just plainly tell us, if you're the Christ, just plainly tell us, let us know, and, uh, and so here's where we're headed, John chapter 10. Uh, John, the uh, fourth gospel, I hope everybody's there. Um, uh, here's what he says in, uh, in verse uh, 22 and following. I'll, I'll jump in at 22, and you're welcome to follow me. Now, John, the author of this book, uh, John is one of the 12 disciples. He walked with Jesus for three years. As a matter of fact, it, it could be easily argued that John uh, was probably the closest of the disciples to walk with Jesus, who had the, the closest, he was in the inner three for sure, uh, but he himself refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. All right, and so we know that John had this close relationship with Jesus. John would later write the letters 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John in our Bible, and then close the New Testament with the book of Revelation. So this uh, apostle, this uh, 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 teacher, this pillar of the, of the church writes this gospel this mini biography of Jesus' life so that you and I, he says his purpose in writing this is so that you and I would believe who Jesus is. And so verse 22, he says, At that time, the feast of the dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. The Jews then gathered around him and were saying to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ Tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And so let's look at, uh, at Jesus' response as they're badgering him for an answer. Now remember, as we're looking at this, we ultimately we want to answer the question, am I sensitive to Jesus' word, to the words of Jesus? All right. Um, he says in verse 25, uh, Jesus answered them, I told you. I told you. Jesus had already answered, I told you. He says, and you do not believe. All right? I, I told you that I was the Christ, and you don't believe. And he says, the works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. You don't believe why? Because what I said was unbelievable? No. Because what I said was irrational? No. Because I, what I said was, was irresponsible? No. You don't believe because you are not of my sheep, Jesus said. In other words, the reason that you don't believe in me, uh, it's not me, the reason is you. All right? uh, uh, do you know why you don't believe in me? Because you don't belong to me. You're not of my sheep. And, uh, and Jesus goes on to say this. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
My sheep hear my voice. Uh, another translation says, my sheep listen to my voice. Now remember, Jesus, who Jesus is referring to here, he's, he's, he's referring to my sheep. Right? This is his sheep. It, he's not saying other people hear my voice, and they know, and, and I know them, and, and they follow me. He says, my sheep. And so specifically, he's talking about his sheep. And so we need to remember that not everyone that bleats is a sheep. Right? Not everybody that, that bleats like a lamb is a sheep. Jesus says, my sheep are different. And so if you hear, if you hear uh, when Jesus speaks, if you hear uh, the words of the Son of God, if you hear the words of the, Jew, the, the Messiah of the Jews, if you hear the words of the Lord of the universe, if you hear the words of a man uh, who, who was crucified for the sins of the world, right? if you hear that, you're a sheep. Right? You hear his voice, and, and it moves your heart. Um, I'm reminded there was a, a pastor that told a story years ago of a, of a woman who comes into a stemware shop. And she tells the owner of the shop, I, I want to buy all of your glasses that are tuned to the key of A. And the, 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 the owner looks at her, you know, puzzled, and says, how would I know, out of all of my glasses, which of these are tuned to the key of A? And she pulls out a tuning fork from her purse, and she strikes it. And all of those that are tuned to the key of A begin to vibrate. Now, I don't know that that's true. I have not, I'm so ignorant about musical things and stuff like that. That's probably just a story. I have no idea. I don't know how that works. But here's what I know. A follower of Jesus, someone who's Jesus' sheep, when they hear his voice, their heart will vibrate. Right, we'll know that that's our shepherd speaking. That's what I know. Um, uh, we'll recognize when Jesus speaks. We will uh, we'll realize what he's saying, and we will respond to his commands. That's what I know when I hear, when a, per a, a sheep, a follower of Jesus, hears the words of Jesus, we'll respond, because Jesus said so. Right? Uh, we'll say to ourselves, yes, Lord, I'll do that. That must be true, because you said it. I'll do it because you commanded it. And so that's how a believer, a follower of Jesus will respond. Um, we'll have eyes to see the truth of God. We'll have ears to hear the truth of God. We'll have a heart to receive the truth of God because we're his sheep. Um, because many have said, as many have said over, over the years, there's really two kinds of, of people in the world. There are those who are spiritually discerning and those who are spiritually deaf. Right? A person who's spiritually discerning will hear the Lord Jesus speak, will read the word of God, and their heart will immediately begin, begin to vibrate. We'll know that this, this man, Jesus, he speaks like nobody else. This man, Jesus, speaks like God himself. He speaks like one with authority. He speaks like a creator God. He speaks like the, the Lord of the universe. And somebody who's spiritually deaf will hear the same words of God and will have no idea what God is saying. They won't understand what he's calling them to do. Right? Because they're not his sheep. Uh, imagine that uh, your cell phones ring. It's not hard to imagine. It happens here almost every Sunday. All right? uh, but imagine that your, your cell phone rings and, uh, and you look down and you don't have caller ID, which I know that's rare, but you don't have caller ID. You look down and you have no idea who's calling, who's on, who's on the other, other end of that line. And you, uh, you answer the phone, which is you know, something I'd never do. If you're not in my contact list, it goes to voicemail, I'll call you back. But imagine your phone rings. You don't know who it is. All right, you answer the phone, and the person on the other end says just two words. It's me. All right. Now, uh, that's pretty vague. Uh, so, uh, logically, uh, that statement is true, right? <laughs> who else could it be, right? It's you. I'll, I'll agree with that, all right? Uh, theoretically, it could be anybody, right? I don't know who that is. I, I don't know your number. I, I don't know who that is. But relationally, relationally, if I know that person, I know who that person is. Right? And Don and I have been married 30 years. And I don't think there's been a time in 30 years. Sometimes she'll call me and, uh, and, and I'll pick up the phone and she'll just say, it's me. Or she'll just start talking about what, whatever it was that she called for. And I, can't, I don't think in 30 years I've ever said, who is this? Right? <laughs> Why is that? Right? Because I know her, I know her voice, right? and, 
and I know her. And so uh, it wouldn't happen if you hear the shepherd's voice. It's because you're his sheep. If you don't hear the shepherd's voice, when you're reading through the, the Gospels, when you're reading the words of Jesus, when you're in prayer, if you don't hear the shepherd's voice, you might not be a sheep. Um, he goes on to say uh, something I think is surprising. Uh, he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. All right? Now, to me, that's surprising because I would think it would be different. Uh, I, I think it, it, Jesus would say, my sheep know my voice, er, and they know me. All right? My sheep hear my voice, and they know me. All right, Because that makes sense, right? Uh, if Donna calls me, I know her voice, and I know her. Right? So it's surprising to me that Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Because that's not how I would have said that. So why did he say it different? Well, I think there's a, there's a reason. Because not everybody who says they're saved is saved. Not everybody who says that they're saved, that they have a relationship with God, has a relationship with God. All right? uh, after years of ministry, I'm convinced not everyone who says they're saved is saved. Uh, the ones who are truly saved, the ones who truly know Jesus, are, are known by Jesus. Well, how do I know that? Um, well, earlier in the same chapter, verse uh, 14 of chapter 10, Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Some translators say, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. All right? And so uh, Jesus knows. All right? So the, the, the question then would be, uh, does Jesus know me? Now, obviously, Jesus knows of you, right? But does he truly know you? Does Jesus know you? And we, can, we can claim that we know somebody and, and, and not know them. I can claim that I know you and you don't know me. Right? Um, but uh, there are people in the world, as a matter of fact, that, that you know, they, they don't know anything about Jesus. And there are people in the world that know some things about Jesus. And then there are people in the world that know Jesus and Jesus knows them. Right? There's a very different group of people. I've shared with you before that our uh, We've gone to the, the Worth It seminar. Many of you have gone with me. Uh, it's a, it's a, a youth activity that we've gone to, and there's always, or usually I should say, uh, some really, really well-known Patriot football players there. Uh, I've met Danny Woodhead. I've met uh, Ben Watson. I've met uh, Matthew Slater, um, uh, David Thomas, uh, a whole group of, of, uh, of Patriot football players. And here's what I can tell you. When, when we arrive up there and we see these guys, Nobody has to introduce them to me, right? Uh, and when they're walking around and, they're, and they're, they're greeting people and whatnot, right? they don't have to introduce them. So I know who they are, but they have no idea who I am. Right? And by the end of the day, even, I can say, hey, I know Danny Woodhead. I've met him. I've heard his testimony. I've met his wife. I know Ben Watson. I know Matt Slater. I know these guys. But by the end of the day, they still don't know me, Right? They have not a clue who I am. I'm one of 500 people that were in the room that they met that day. And I didn't get the opportunity to tell them anything about me. How, how I came to know Jesus or what Jesus has been doing in my life lately or anything about uh, my testimony. They don't know me. But I, I could say I know them. Um, the, uh, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, in verse 22 and 23... Jesus is going to stand before a group, group of people, and, he, and, and they're going to say, uh, listen, I, I partnered with you in ministry. Um, you know, I, 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 did, I did works in your name, right? We know each other, but they'll ultimately be rejected. He, here's what Jesus says. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name, cast out demons. In your name, perform any miracles. Right? Weren't we together? Weren't, wasn't I on your team? Didn't we do all this together? Right? And, and I will declare to them, verse 23, I never knew you. Not I don't know you anymore. I don't know who you've become. You've changed. You start, you, you've walked away from me. No, he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I never knew you. And so uh, the question, again, 
do, does Jesus know you? That's the question that we have before us. Um, and so, am I sensitive to the word of Jesus? When Jesus speaks, does my heart respond? Do, do, I, do, I, uh, do I have a, a response to the heart of Jesus? Am I walking to his beat and his beat alone? The second question that we get in our text today is this. Uh, am I surrendered to a walk with Jesus? Right? Uh, am I sensitive to the word of Jesus? Am, am I surrendered to a walk with Jesus? It's not enough that I just hear the voice of God. Right, that, that I, I know that when, when God, I recognize his voice, but we need to be surrendered to a walk with Jesus. The second way that I can know that I'm, that I'm a sheep, that I'm one of Jesus' sheep, is by looking at my feet. I can look at my feet and I can see, am I a sheep of Jesus? Look what he says in 27. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. Right? Uh, I think it's pretty clear what Jesus is saying there. Right? We've been talking about this for weeks, following Jesus. We've been talking about it for, this is week four, following Jesus. Not just you know, a Sunday morning thing. It's, a, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's an everyday thing. It is, do we follow Jesus? Do, not that we get together here and we have our, our Sunday smiles on and our Sunday best on and we, we leave here and, and just kind of live like the rest of the world. But do we walk with Jesus every day? Do we follow Jesus? Not follow Jesus on Sunday. Do we follow Jesus? Is that the pattern of our life? Um, if, we, if, if you really know Jesus and Jesus really knows you, right, then you'll live like a sheep and not like a goat. If you're familiar with the, the, the parable or the, the story Jesus says about dividing the sheep and the goats, right? Well, you'll live like a sheep. Um, if you're not following Jesus, then, uh, then you're not hearing Jesus. And so uh, let me meddle a, a little bit again. Listen, there's people all over the country who come into church on Sundays, and, and they think that because uh, they walk down the aisle or they raise their hand or they filled out a card way, way back when, that they're good with God. Right? They're good with God. Uh, I've seen so many people in, in my years of ministry that have raised a hand, walked down the aisle, filled out a card, expressed that they've placed faith in Jesus Christ at, at some point. Maybe some of them even been baptized, right? Uh, and then three months later, the FBI couldn't find them if they tried. Right? They're just, they're just gone. Uh, many people have called them elka seltzer Christians, right? You dunk them in water, and they fizz for a while, and then they disappear. Right? They're just gone. That's what happens. Uh, I've seen it over and over and over again. Uh, putting on a uniform does not make you a soldier. And wearing a badge doesn't make you a police officer. It truly is what you do after you say that you've given your life to Jesus that proves whether you're a sheep or not, whether you're actually part of the family of God. Uh, there's an outlet over here, and, and, uh, and what I believe about that outlet, it's going to change my life. What I believe about that outlet is how I treat that outlet. When I need power... I know where the source of that power is, and I'm going to go to that source of power. Because I believe there's power in that outlet, I think. Yes, your husband's thing is plugged in over there all the time. That one works, right? <laughs> I, believe, I believe there's power in that outlet, right? Um, and so I'm going to treat it with respect. I'm going to use it when, when I need it. I know where to go to get power. But if I don't believe there's power in that outlet, I look in there and I don't see any power. Do you see any power in that? I don't see any power in that outlet. Um, then that's going to change how I live my life. When I'm looking for power, when I need power, I'm not going there because I don't believe that that's really a source of power. Uh, I'm not going to treat that with respect and with care. I've got a great story to tell you guys about somebody who didn't do that, uh, really. Uh, not for today, but oh, he lived through it, so that's good. That makes that a great story. All right? um, but again, let me repeat what I said before. It is not my intention today to make you doubt that you have what you think that you have. That's not my intention today, and not my purpose. Right? But I also don't want you to think that you have something that you don't have. And many times I've seen people uh, you know, raise their hand, go forward, however they did it, fill out a card, and, and you never see them again. All right? um, as a matter of fact, I was born into a Christian home. A little snapshot of my life. I was in church probably the first or second week of my life, and ever since. And I didn't know Jesus. 
I went to Sunday school every Sunday. I went to VBS every year. As a matter of fact, Pastor John has a similar testimony of being in church and not being safe. Not everyone who's safe, uh, who says they're safe, is actually safe. Right? And so that's, that's, how we, that's how we've experienced what it is uh, you know, to be in church and, and not to be safe. Um, and so uh, if, if I'm a follower of Jesus, does my life show? You know, I look at my feet. Do they show that I'm following after Jesus? Am I proactively connecting with the lost? Am I seeking the lost? Am I, am I passionately caring for the lost? Am I trying to bring them into a relationship with Jesus? Am I, am I committed to the lost? Do I go low and get dirty serving the lost so that they'll know what love is because that's what Jesus did for me? Am I salt and light to the lost? I can look at my feet and I can see I'm a follower of Jesus or if I'm just somebody who says I'm a Christian, right? Um, can people tell by the way that we walk, by the way that we talk, by the attitudes of our heart that we follow, that they're not following somebody that you're following, right? We're following a whole different person, right? And, and can you tell from the life that we live that I'm not following who they're following? And as a matter of fact, um, uh, I can see what Jesus has done in that person's life. And I know who they used to be. Many times our friends know who we used to be. And they can see that Jesus made a difference in, in, in your life. All glory to God. Because I know who that person used to be. I know who, how they used to live. And so that's why we've called this series, Follow Jesus. Um, can people, by the way that we talk, by the way that we walk, know that, that we're followers of Jesus? Jesus didn't die, come to earth and die, so that we could have fire insurance. Right? That, was, that was never his purpose, so that we could just have fire insurance and then, and then live life our own way. Right? When Jesus comes into our lives, he comes in as king. He comes in as master and as Lord. These are the descriptions that we have of him in, in the scriptures. And if, if we think Jesus has come into our life and we've raised our hand and we've signed a card or whatever, and Jesus has never arrived at that point in our lives where king, Lord, master, I can look at my feet and I can see that they're wandering all over the place. Well, then, uh, I don't think that we're the description of the sheep that Jesus gives in the text today. Um, I think that we're uh, something else entirely. Um, so for you today, uh, have you been following Jesus? I, so some of you here, I think, you know, Jesus might be asking you to follow him into baptism. Right? I, it's so clear the first thing that we see in the scriptures when somebody comes to, to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, they follow him into baptism. We were looking at that last night with the teenagers. We were looking at the life of the Apostle Paul. In uh, Acts chapter 9. And, and Paul comes, Saul at the time, comes into a relationship with the person of Jesus, comes to know Jesus. The first thing in his life, he's baptized, publicly identified with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying you have to be baptized to be saved. That's not what we're saying. But uh, the late great preacher Adrian Rogers had it right. If you don't love Jesus enough to get into a pool of water, why do you think that you love him enough to get into heaven? Baptism is the, the first thing. There may be people in this room, certainly people listening uh, from whoever, from wherever, right, that, that have believed upon the person of Jesus Christ and want to follow Jesus. Well, the first thing he's asking us to do is to follow him into baptism. It's not the Baptist thing. That's not why we say that. It's not a church thing. It's a Jesus thing. That's what Jesus asked us to do. My sheep hear my voice and know me and they follow me. And so when Jesus says, be baptized, you see, yes, Lord. When Jesus says, give to my church, give a tithe to my church, we say, yes, Lord. Right? He's our master. He's our king. We follow Jesus. So are we sensitive to the word of Jesus? Uh, are we surrendered to a walk with Jesus? And lastly, am I sure of the work of Jesus? Jesus tells us uh, who his sheep are. And then here he's going to tell us what the benefits of being a sheep are. Right here are the benefits. In verse 28, he says, I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Read that first line with me, would you, out loud? I give eternal life to them. Right? I give eternal life to them. That's a, a benefit of being a sheep, a follower of Jesus, eternal life. 
Now, we don't have time to, uh, uh, to, to take apart that whole verse. That, that's that's a, a series for Pastor John down the road, just that one verse, right? Today, I want to highlight two words, uh, give and eternal. Give and eternal. If it's a gift, it cannot be earned. And if I lose it before I ever got it or I had it and I don't have it now, it was not eternal, was it? Right? So those two things we need to understand what Jesus is saying. Eternal life can't be earned by being good. If it could be earned by being good, it could be lost by being bad. It just makes sense. Again, listen to what he says. I give eternal life to them. All right? He doesn't say, I will give eternal life to them. He doesn't say, I'm going to loan eternal life to you or I'll, I'll let you borrow it for a little while as long as you meet these conditions. I give eternal life to you. Eternal life, by the way, isn't something that uh, you get when you die. It's something that you get when you believe. Right? So many people think that eternal life is something that's going to uh, happen to them or arrive to them once they die. But uh, uh, the fact is, they, 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 there's lots of people. I have dear friends. My, actually, my mother's best friend. Sorry, Mom. My mother's best friend all right, uh, lives her life this way. If you ask her if she's saved, you know, I sure hope I am. Uh, I sure want to go to heaven. I sure want to be saved. I sure pray that I'm saved. Right? Uh, and, and that's how they live their life. And, and unaware, unconvinced uh, that, that what they have what they have and, and they'll have that forever. And that's, that's a sad way to live your life. Here's a newsflash for you. If you don't have eternal life before you die, you're surely not going to get it after you die. If you don't have eternal life before you die, it is for sure not going to happen after you die. The scriptures are absolutely clear. We either have it now, and we have it forever, or we just don't have it. We may think that we have it, but we don't have it. Um, have you ever bought an appliance, uh, and after a while it needed a repair? I'm homeowners, right? You can testify that happens all the time. Right? Well, when you call to schedule that repair, they can say five words to you that will make you cry, will make you scream, make you want to jump off a bridge. The warranty has run out. Right? Uh, that is a testimony. Where's the Ely's? Let me hear an amen. Right? That's over and over and over. Test, uh, the appliance demons live over on uh, Galetta Drive. Um, hey, uh, we, we have a divine warranty with Jesus, right? Uh, that will never, ever, ever run out. If you are a sheep, if you are a, a follower of Jesus Christ, you have a divine warranty that will never, ever, ever run out. Uh, he says, and uh, he goes on in, in 28, he says, uh, I give them eternal, I give eternal life to them and they will never perish, right? Physical life can be taken away from you. Spiritual life, eternal life is yours. Never, ever, ever perish. Now, obviously, he's not talking about physical life because everybody dies unless Jesus is going to come back for his church first. The rest of us we have, it is appointed to us to die and then the judgment, right? And so we have a, 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 a life that will never, ever, ever be taken away from us. And it's clearly not physical life. It is our eternal life. It is our spiritual life. And I love the picture that he paints for us here in 28 and 29. He gives us this picture. Uh, he says, no one will snatch them out of my hand. Right? Uh, listen, here's the, here's the picture. Is that God takes you. You're a teeny tiny. God takes you and puts you in the palm of Jesus' hand. And then he closes Jesus' hand. And he wraps his hand around Jesus' hand. And so you are as secure as anything could ever be. There's nothing, not you, not Satan, not any of his demons could take you out of the palm of his hand. You are in a divine double grip. A child of God, a sheep of God is as secure as anything could ever be. Your salvation, your eternal life, your position in the family of God is as secure as it could ever be. Nobody, listen, nobody could take that away from you. Not you, not Satan, no, uh, no uh, spiritual power above or below or nobody on earth. Nobody can take that away from you. Will never snatch you out of my hand. 
our eternal security does not depend on our grip on God, but it depends on God's grip on us. Right? Our eternal security doesn't depend on our grip on God, but on but his grip on us. That's, that's where the, the power is. Listen, there's nobody here today, there's nobody listening, nobody far, far away that is so good and so godly that you can hold on to God. It's not going to happen. You fail, we'll fall. That's, it's not going to happen. We won't be able to do that. But my eternity, your eternity, doesn't depend on you or I. It depends on Him. And so I'm not as secure as, as I think I am. I, how secure am I? I'm as secure as God is. Right? I'm not as secure as my faith is. I'm not as secure as my determination is. I'm not as secure as my perseverance is. I'm not as secure as my will is. I'm as secure as God is. Because he has me in the palm of his hand. And so there's nothing that I or Satan or anybody else could ever do to change that. So the big question really isn't you know, how secure you are. That's not the question. The question, the question is how saved are you? How saved are you? Because not everyone who says they're saved is saved. People always will wrestle with this, by the way. Uh, they'll wrestle with this concept that, that if the church teaches once saved, always saved, Right, that God will, will have you, then, then people will just live any old way. Right? And, and you know what? That might be true. Uh, you tell people, hey, the Bible says, you know, once the, the, when you're saved, you're eternally secure. They may live any old way. That's true. Um, but do you, do you know what Jesus said before? You know, they'll, they'll say, hey, Jesus said, I give eternal life. And no one can snatch me out of his hand. So it really doesn't matter how I live. You know, that's true. Jesus said that. But you know what he said before that? Before that, this is what he said. He said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And so, it, if I'm looking at that, and that's the description of, of what it is to be his sheep, well, then I'm not just living any old way, am I? If I'm truly a, a believer, if I, I, and I hear the commands of Jesus, and, I, and my feet are pointed in a direction of obedience, right? listen, we're going we're gonna to mess up. You know, nobody's going to look at, back at their life and see, wow, that is a straight line. It's between me and Jesus, right? I never veered, you know, that is, poof, that's great. Nobody's going to be there. Nobody's going to have that experience. But the fact is, when we fall down, we get up. We get right with God, and we follow Jesus. And that's the pattern of a follower of Jesus. And so, yeah, here's, here's the benefits of, of being in a relationship with God through Jesus. Eternal life. You have this supernatural, secure future with a loving God who absolutely loves you. Uh, but first, are you a sheep? Does he know you? Are you following him? And so, what's Jesus saying to you today? Maybe he's saying to you today, um, you know, I'd really love for you to be in a relationship with me and with my Father through faith in my work on the cross. Maybe Jesus is saying to you today, I want you to be a part of the family of God. Maybe Jesus is saying to you that, uh, hey, hey, uh, uh, we've been... We've been walking together for a little while, and you've yet to follow me into baptism. Maybe now is the time for you to publicly identify yourself as a follower of Jesus through baptism. Or maybe Jesus is just simply saying to you today, hey, you've, you've, uh, you've, you've fallen down, but you've failed to get up and get right and, and get back in line and, and follow me. I don't know what Jesus is saying to you today, but I bet you do. My guess is that God's been talking to you for a while, either calling you to walk closer to him or calling you to walk with him for the very first time. Um, what is Jesus saying to you today? Uh, would you join me in a word of prayer as we get ready to wrap up and the worship team comes? Hey, with every head bowed and every eye closed, let me ask, do you know that you know? Do you know that you know that you have a relationship with God and you're sure that you do? And you know that that relationship is a forever and always relationship. And you know that you have that today. 
Is there enough evidence to convict you of being a follower of Jesus when the world looks upon you? Does your life portray or betray your lips? Maybe you leave here our Sunday after Sunday and, and you, you just continually doubt that you're saved. And, and maybe you should because you're not saved. And some of you know that. Uh, maybe you leave here Sunday after Sunday and you doubt that you're saved and you shouldn't. Right? That you truly are saved. You've placed your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. But you doubt it because you've messed up. Because you've, 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 uh, you've fallen down and, and you've participated and you've walked with the world for a while. Maybe you're uh, falling into drugs or alcohol or pornography. Or maybe your mouth got you in trouble. Maybe it's lying or gossip or whatever. But you know that you're not right with God. And so you wonder if you've lost your salvation. Well, I'd, I'd love for you to work this out today. Right? If, if that's you today, either you... you you don't know that you have a relationship with God, or you're just not sure. Let's take care of that today. Would you like to know that you can have a relationship with God? Would you like to know that your relationship with God is a forever and always relationship? Well, maybe you simply pray a prayer like this. <clears throat> Dear God, you sent Jesus to die for my sins because I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I can't save myself. But because I have believed that Jesus is the Son of God himself, I believe that he is the Lord of the universe. I believe that he paid for my sins on the cross at Calvary. I believe that he rose from the grave victorious over sin and death, and that he's offered to me a relationship with you, God, through faith in his finished work. And I believe that he's alive today. Well, then today, Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord, my Master, my God, my King. Father, give me your Holy Spirit that I might live my life for you and by your power that I would follow Jesus. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for securing me in your righteous right hand. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you really know that you know, you're here today, you know that you know, you're, you're convinced that you know that you've been walking with Jesus, let me just encourage you to just not let that doubt linger. Come back to this text. Be reminded and refreshed of how God has secured you in the palm of his hand. And it is not conditional upon your walk with Jesus or my walk with Jesus. Our eternity is in the hands of Jesus and we will never perish and no one will ever snatch us from his hands. Maybe you pray with me this morning. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus to take your righteous wrath upon himself, the wrath that was due us for our sins, so that we could have forgiveness of sins and a brand new life, so that we could have a relationship with a holy and a righteous God. Thank you for our salvation. May your Holy Spirit, God, lead us. May your Spirit guide us to follow Jesus. And may the world around us see Jesus sticking out of us as they examine us. We pray it all in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Would you rise and join us in worship? <laughs>
Downstairs and overflow that need to come up through the foyer as well. God bless you. Feel free to see each other socially, distantly in the parking lot.